People have always felt that there is something else greater than themselves, something unseen, something untouchable, something big, something great. From the very beginning, human beings asked in all the different languages, what is this great something? Where is it? Where could it be found? People asked their leaders, but what is this? What does it look like? Where can it be found? And the leaders answered, it is the most perfect of things, with no eyes to see with and no hands to work with, yet it has created everything and is everywhere. Well, many people thought this was impossible. How could something with no eyes to see and no hands to work with make things? If this being is something that cannot be seen or touched, how could he have made the stars that sparkle in the sky, the bright sun, the mountains, and the wind? How could something with no eyes and no hands create the birds and the trees, the fishes and the sea? And it really does seem impossible. But as you shall see, everything that exists, whether it has life or not, in all that it does, and by the very fact of being here, obeys the laws of nature. In the beginning there was chaos, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, an immensity of space with no beginning and no end, indescribably dark and cold. Who can imagine this darkness and coldness? When we think of dark, we think of night, but our night would be brilliant like sunshine compared to this darkness. When we think of cold, we think of ice, but ice is perfectly hot compared to the coldness of space. In this measureless void of cold and darkness, light was created. There appeared something like a fiery cloud, and within this cloud were all the stars in the sky, and our star, the sun, and even the earth that we live on. So intense was the heat and light that everything we know was fused together in an immensity too huge to imagine, spinning in the infinite coldness of space, burning, burning, spinning, spinning. And as this cloud of light and heat moved through empty space, little drops fell from it. These little drops are like the countless stars in the sky, moving always and forever, forever away from their beginning. Some stars are so far away that it takes millions of years for their light to reach us. Do you know how fast light travels? Some of you do. About 300 million meters per second. It means that when I snap my finger, light has traveled around the Earth seven and a half times. When the stars and the Earth came into being, there was no detail left out. Every tiny part of the universe, every speck we think is too small to matter, was assigned to behave in a certain way. For the tiny drop that was to become our world, there would be no more chaos. Instead of burning confusion, there was to be air, water, and rocks. It was wonderfully simple. The blazing mass of the earth and all its particles would be transformed into air, water, and rocks. Every particle we know can be grouped into these three states, solids, liquids, and gases. We've discovered another called plasma, but for now we'll just think about these three. In the solid state, the particles cling tightly together and are almost impossible to separate. Solids stay together unless a great force is applied to it. And even then, the particles still cling tightly together. Liquids were given these rules to follow. When you are inside something, you shall take the form of the container you are in, but outside you shall flow and spread freely, filling every hollow and crevice. You will not cling so tightly together, but shall roll over one another. You will push downwards and sideways, but never up, which is why we can put our hands in water, not into a rock. And finally to the gases, these were the orders given. Your particles shall not cling together at all, but shall float freely in all directions. 
This is the simple plan given to the particles, but there was more. Solids, liquids, and gases were also given this final rule. You will remain in your state unless heat or cold is applied to you. In this way, if a solid is heated to a certain temperature, it shall become a liquid, and a liquid shall become a gas. But not all change at the same temperature. And yet there is one more law. Each of these states shall have a certain weight, but not all the same weight, and those that are heavier shall sink to the bottom. And so, these are the laws that were given to the particles existing in the little droplets of light and heat that were to become our Earth. But eventually, everything started to kind of slow and cool down, and the Earth began to cool down too. The outside cooled down much faster than the inside, and the particles followed the rules they were given, heavier ones sinking down and the lighter ones floating above, each of the layers pushing on the other and sometimes the hotter, lower layer bursting through. But as it went up, it cooled and fell to the earth again, and then sunk and became hotter again. Can you imagine this dance, the dance of the elements? Heat rising up into cooler space and then sinking down again, bringing with it a bit of cold, only to heat and rise again. Because of this law, the earth finally changed from a ball of fire and melting rock to the earth we know today, tiny particles dancing their dance, following their rules. For hundreds, thousands, millions of years this dance went on, and the earth began to shrink and wrinkle like an apple that has been left in the cupboard too long. The wrinkles are the mountains, and the hollows between them the oceans, and above them is the air we breathe. Rocks, water, air, solids, liquid, gases. Each is what it is because of its degree of temperature. Today, as it was yesterday and millions of years ago, these laws are obeyed in the same way. The world spins round itself and round and round the sun. And today, as it was millions of years ago, the earth and all the elements and compounds of which it is composed, as they fulfill their task, their cosmic task, Whisper with one voice, thy will be done, we obey.